Hey, hey everybody. Welcome back. Today we are going to take these and they're, they're not thrift finds. They are <clears throat> some trays that I found in a store. So they're not used, but they're drabby. They're kind of dark. Um, I was able to see through the drabbiness. And of course I love the horses, but we're gonna lighten it up with some white chalk paint and we are actually gonna turn it into a tiered tray that we will decorate in next week's video. We are going to um, add this smaller piece on top of the larger tray with these Dollar Tree vases. Um, I cleaned everything up, took a wet cloth to it, took some alcohol swabs to the glass to try to get as much oil off as I can. In today's video, we are just gonna use white chalk paint and we are going to actually use petroleum jelly where I am going to add some of it to the wood. That way when I paint it, we can work super hard and use a sanding block and get down to the wood, but I don't like to work that hard, I'm not gonna lie. So we will actually apply some petroleum jelly to the wood. So when we apply the paint, the paint does not stick to the parts that we don't want it to. So what I'm going to do is I get these little sponges and I get a ton of them. You can get them at the Dollar Tree because once I'm done with them, I just throw them away. So before I used to mess with paint brushes, but it's really a hassle to clean them. Um, some projects require paint brushes. A lot of them don't. So I just buy the sponges from the Dollar Tree. And once I'm done with my project, then I will just throw it away. some petroleum jelly on areas and I'm not too picky I just kind of just throw it on there So once you have your petroleum jelly on every area that you don't want paint to adhere to, you're going to take your chalk paint and I'm just going to apply it everywhere. I'm going to apply it on the bottom too, but I'm going to wait until um, after I do everything else before I apply it on the bottom. So you're just going to take it and you're just going to apply your paint like you normally would. So once you have your first coat on there, uh, I'm going to let it dry between coats. On the outside, I'm only going to apply two coats because I don't want too much paint to have to get through. 
but on the bottom part of the trays, I am probably going to have to apply probably three or four coats on the bottom um, to cover up the picture. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to do the same process with the smaller tray and I'm going to actually take a small sponge with some paints for the last coat because I'm not a fan of the brush marks um, to eliminate all the brush marks. All right, now that we have both of our trays completely painted, I end up having to do about four, to, four coats on the bottom part, but the sides took two coats. I went ahead and painted our vases with two coats of white paint. When we put everything together, then I'll seal it with a clear gloss um, so none of the paint chips off. One other thing that I did do as well is I measured our big tray and I placed two dots um, where I want the glasses to sit. That way it's even, we don't have to worry about it leaning to one side or the other. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a sanding block and I am going to lightly sand where just over pretty much the whole entire um, sides, but I will leave the bottom alone. So as you can see, um, it wasn't hard to sand at all. Yes, it's a little bit messy. So if you don't want to get your room dusty and messy, then I would recommend do this out in the garage or do this outside. But with us applying the petroleum jelly the way we did, it didn't take me much to sand off um, and just give a, a nice distressed look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to distress our second tray and then we will assemble it with our Dollar Tree bases. All right, now we are done with the sanding of both and I'm really, I love how it turned out. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the I, I love crafting but I'm not a fan of painting. I usually spray paint everything, but it's kind of hard to do that when you're distressing. So it was a lot to have to um, paint everything, but it was well worth it. Both of them turned out really pretty, um, distressed, um, farmhouse, and I love it. So what we are going to do now is I'm going to secure the two vases to the bottom and I'm going to use super glue which is going to be a temporary hold um, until an E6000 which will be the permanent hold but the hot glue will temporary hold it and give it enough stability um, and security for the E6000 to cure because this does take um, quite a bit of time to cure so what I'm going to do is I'm sure y'all can't see it but I measured this out um, where exactly I wanted it so I have a dot over here and a dot over here and then what I did was I marked the center 
of the glass as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line up the two dots on the tray and on this to make sure that everything's even. I'm gonna bring this dot up a little bit because I can't see it when I set it down. Let's go ahead and check the other one while we're at it. And once you put them on there, you're not gonna be able to see it. Just make sure that when you're marking anything that you just don't mark it too much. So it is a vase. I didn't paint the bottom. I didn't worry about the inside because that's gonna be covered. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna flip these upside down now that I think about it and I should have done it before only for the fact that when you put your E6000 on, it's really hard to get it on the rim because obviously gravity and it's gonna wanna go down. So I really think it'll be easier if I flip this upside down. And so that means that I need to reposition my dot. So we're gonna eyeball it and hope it's in the middle. And they're gonna, we're gonna reposition this one as well. And I guess I could get out the measure, the ruler, but I'm sure y'all don't wanna sit there and watch me measure a glass. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, as best as I can, because like I said, gravity. This is a new tube only because, I ain't gonna lie, I accidentally threw away my other one. My other one was falling apart. So as y'all can see how it's fallen down. So sometimes it does. It makes it, it makes it super hard to try to get your E6000 on there the way you should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple dabs of hot glue. Hopefully it'll secure it. And I'm not really worried about the way it looks because once we're done, once it cures, then I'm going to add some Sorry guys couldn't I couldn't do that and talk at the same time and I don't know why um, I'm going to add some jute around it to kind of tie in this wood part to this part. I'm gonna hold it there for a second Allow that hot glue to stick. I think that'll be good for now. <clears throat> and I think. we are going to do sorry guys I had to go get it is now I'm gonna take my hot glue let's do it in the center so it's not so noticeable I'm gonna do is just add a couple strands around just 
just until I think it looks good. exactly the same all right so now that we have the jute wrapped around the bottom of the vases what we are going to do is we are now going to attach the bottom part to the bottom tray sorry lost my train of thought so this one I didn't I didn't measure so what we're going to have to do is eyeball it and I hate eyeballing it, but what do you do? I'm going to feel with my fingers on the bottom to see how far we are. So that right there looks about even. I think it's about as even as we're gonna get. That way we at least know where to place it. Even though we haven't glued it yet. All right. So what we're gonna do, so we'll take that E6000 and I'm gonna put a big glob just right in the middle. I'm gonna take some hot glue, just gonna squeeze it in a couple areas to give it some temporary hold. We're gonna take this, let's do it this way. Have to move fast on this one because it, it sets quick. All right, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. I'm gonna hold it for a couple seconds. Allow that hot glue to dry. Once you're done with this, make sure that you set it aside that it doesn't get knocked. Like I said, the E6000 will take some time to cure and you don't want it to fall apart on you. The E6000 or the hot glue will not hold for a long time. All right, and we are done, <laughs> and I love it. I know my camera positioning, I need to work on that. I'm sorry, guys. But um, here's the finished product. I do not want to move it too much. So what I will do is I will come back and show you an all-around view of it so you know what it is now this is just the first part of a two-part project of mine so make sure you stay tuned for next week's video because next week I have some super beautiful rustic um, elegant crafts that we are going to put together some of them are really simple but we're going to put it together that way we can decorate this tray and we could put it on the end table in the living room um, and it'll all tie in together so make sure y'all stay tuned for next week's video i will see y'all later bye